Desperation on a scale not seen in decades. Thousands have arrived in Kabul in the past few days. People who had homes and jobs, who led dignified lives, forced to leave everything behind. Angry that they've been left on their own. No government, no humanitarian agencies. Malaka's sons are in the army. She says only the poor go to the battlefield while politicians watch. We've seen this camp grow by the hour. People have been coming in from different parts of the country as more and more provincial capitals, more and more cities are being taken over by the Taliban. Many of those we've met here have run once, twice, multiple times, and now they've come here to Afghanistan's capital, Kabul. From here, they say, there's nowhere else to go. To get here, they've survived dangerous journeys, past Taliban checkpoints and active front lines. <laughs> Gulalai says they moved from one place to another for three days before they got to Kabul. She has four children, the youngest is two. Ten-year-old Khalida was in school taking her exams when the Taliban attacked. Many had to leave their dead behind to save their own lives. She Muhammad's parents died in the violence. Many here have fled from Kunduz in North Afghanistan, which fell to the Taliban on Sunday. Today in Kabul, we bumped into these men who we'd met four weeks ago in Kunduz. Then, the city was a refuge for tens of thousands of people who'd fled fighting in villages. Now we've learned that in recent days, mortar shells landed in these camps. We don't know what happened to the people we'd met there. Most of the north of the country has been taken over by the Taliban now. Those who've escaped to Kabul are staring at uncertainty. Fears that the capital too could fall within weeks.